everybody, it's Sierra, the Artsy Badger, and today we're going to be doing the Scribble Challenge. The Scribble Challenge is where you take any random pen, do a random mark on the page, and then try to make something out of it. So let's do it! So instead of just staring at the squiggle, hoping for inspiration to strike, I decided to take a picture of it with my iPad and open it up in Procreate to be able to doodle my ideas that way. And it's also so easy to rotate the squiggle to try and get different ideas from different angles. So I was pretty excited. So I started off with the original angle. And although I cut out a lot of my sort of thinking process because it was just me sitting there staring at the squiggle wondering what I could make of the squiggle, I often have these like gut instincts to the squiggle like I instantly see something, but then I don't like that idea. And so I spend a lot of time trying to think of another idea or a different way to express it, I guess. So this one was the same. I just instantly saw a like lion mouth in that bigger part of the squiggle. I mean, you can see where I drew the lion's mouth. So I just went with it. But from previous squiggle challenge experience, I have learned that you should just go with your instincts. So for this next one, I saw a lady with a sun hat and like billowing hair, but as I was drawing the hair, the left side or her left side, I guess, just wasn't looking right. So I erased it. Also a little disclaimer, I don't really know how to use Procreate yet. So if I'm doing something the super duper slow way, please don't judge me. I'm still learning how to use this thing. So I decided to move the hair down a little bit instead of making it look so crazy. Then I was at a loss for what to do with that final squiggle, so I made it into a little snake wrapped around her hat. Everyone I showed this option said it looked like a witch. I swear that wasn't what I was going for, but I guess I kind of understand. This next one, I saw a little like llama or alpaca with a blanket and a side satchel thing. That little squiggly line, although I saw it at the tail at first, proportionally it wouldn't work. And so I made it a lead for the llama. And then I drew this really like derpy guy holding onto the lead next to him. In a weird way, it's the worst use of the line, but it's one of my favorite creativity-wise, I guess. So I don't know if you've ever done the scribble challenge before, but I have many times and I almost always see birds. I don't know if it's because birds come in so many different shapes and sizes and colors and personalities and they're just so much fun to stylize, but it seems to always work with the squiggle. But after much deliberation, I decided I was going to go with this one. Now keep in mind these are just really rough sketches, so I'm going to try and refine it a little bit here in the final product. So on the note of the scribble challenge, I am not exactly sure who came up with this challenge. I think the first channel that I saw do it was Doodle Date. They're a really cute channel. If you haven't heard of them before, you should really go check them out. And I also know that Drawing with Waffles or Rin has done it recently. She had her brother draw the squiggle for her. And honestly, that is one of my favorite ways to do this. And now that I say that, I even remember doing this in my middle school art class. We would just draw random squiggles for each other when we were finished with our projects early and then see what we could make of it. And I remember the one girl that was sitting next to me, she thought that my ability to make things out of random shapes was really impressive. But yeah, kind of a weird random memory. But anyway, what I was saying was that I do kind of prefer that way where you have someone else draw the squiggle for you because if you're drawing your own squiggle, it's sometimes easy to use a shape that you're comfortable with, I guess, or use an angle that you're comfortable with. 
It's a squiggle that's in your style, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so a lot of the times that I do this kind of a challenge, I ask someone else to draw the squiggle for me. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this, there was no one around to draw me a squiggle. So I just had to draw it myself, but I tried really hard to not think about it at all, which is kind of funny to say. But I think I did a good job. I think I didn't think about it. A few things about this concept that I went with, I don't know what to call it, but this image that I ended up going with, the one thing that was bothering me was that line that connects the lion to the girl. I didn't know how to make it fit in. So you will see later, I will try to incorporate it into the background. And I think it hides well enough, but the whole point of the scribble challenge is to still be able to see the squiggle, I think, or at least see the origin of your inspiration. I did decide to use watercolor for this drawing. I don't really know why. I think I'm just kind of in a watercolor kick and really enjoying the sort of texture that watercolor brings naturally. I really gotta get myself some nice watercolor paper because my sketchbook paper just buckles and it's really not made for watercolor and whenever I try to layer, it just starts beating up. So I think I'm gonna make a trip to the art store this week to go get some actual watercolor paper. <laughs> So in painting this big cat, obviously it's very stylized, so it's not really meant to be any particular breed of cat, but I had envisioned it as a lion, as I had said before, which is why I gave it a tuft on the end of its tail. But as you will see later, semi-spoiler alert, I kind of change it into a leopardy tiger thing because it just seems so plain and I wanted to add more texture and dimension to the drawing. So please ignore the weird combination of tuft tail and spots because it's not meant to be a real life animal. It's, it's just, it's just my imagination. <laughs> so I decided to go with that really cool technique of blocking out portions of the background to create depth. I really love using this technique. I think I used it for the first time ever in my life in my Hawaii travel journal. If you guys haven't seen that one already, I think that's one of my favorite videos I've made. So I'll link it up in the card. I really love the result of blocking out the colors. It looks kind of muddy in the beginning, but as you let it dry and as you add more layers and more depth, it just really comes to life. So here you see me adding the spots. I was also inclined to add the spots because of the stripe across the leopard, jaguar, lion's face. I felt like adding spots would hide that scribble a little bit more. Same with the big line that goes down through its chest. And I really like the way that it looks. It was really fun to just be loose with it and blot down spots wherever I felt like it. So here in the shading of her face is exactly what I was talking about earlier. The paper starts to beat up and the color doesn't lift, but it's okay. When it's completely dry, you don't really notice it. Now I'm adding some cell shading. I'm still kind of in an experimental stage as far as my shading with watercolors goes. I love the way that Casey's cell block shading looks. I just feel like I don't totally have the hang of it yet. This was probably my most successful attempt at shading so far.
And now you get to see the background all finished up, but I lost a bunch of footage. I forgot to press record, I guess. I thought that I did, but then I stood up to change camera angles and there was nothing being recorded. So unfortunately you don't get to see me adding that second dark layer. Honestly, watching it back myself, I don't even really notice a change to the background, but you can see that I added a second layer of dark, I hope. Now just adding those final touches of shines to the eye. Now I'm trying to add some whiskers to this big cat and boy was my white gel pen giving me trouble. After many, many rolls of the gel pen, it finally worked-ish, but looks like I need to get a new gel pen. <laughs> And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create something out of a squiggle. Let me know what you guys saw in the squiggle. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week.